Hello everybody, happy anniversary. It's one year since the founding of t Pulse Corner and releasing our YouTube content. And we're revisiting where we started. It's June, it's evergreen month, so we're focusing on keyword terms that Wizards of the Coast uses. In this case, we're focusing on uh, not necessarily one that's a vinyl term that goes on all the creatures, uh, like uh, Vigilance or Trample, but we're focusing on Exile. And I've already done some playtesting, and I found out I had one copy of Divine Smite in this deck, where a target creature, Planeswalker, and opponent controls phases out. If that permanent is black, you exile it instead. I played seven, eight matches. Not a single time did I encounter the color black. I took it out, immediately faced black. So I think magic sorting algorithm is a little messed up. This is normally considered a sideboard card anyway, but I mean, I guess you can use it strategically. If you're tired of playing against black for a spell, you could maybe even make a mono blue deck for all I know and put one copy of this card in your deck and you won't have to worry about any black removal spells, right? <laughs> so, you know, that's what happened. So I took that card out. I also had another, um, let's see, Thraven Spirit was a card I had in here at the start to, to work with the uh, Thraven Exorcism. Exile target spirit creature with disturb or enchantment. I only had one copy. It ended up being a dead card too much of the time. So again, this might be a sideboard card in best of three. What I did was I ended up putting two Doom Scars in. And because we only have 14 creatures, so we can get Sworn pretty easily. Uh, it is a relatively cheap deck, average 2.5. Made sure to put a couple of Field of Runes in there to deal with the lands. And there's one other card that I want to switch out. Let's see, I've got one Wandering Emperor, so I'm going to put a second one in there so I'm back up to 60 by the time I'm done. Uh, but Unlicensed Hearse uh, ended up being a dead card too much of the time. So it looks like a. I like the art, I like the idea of it, but I don't think that it works for this deck concept. So I'm going to be maybe trying to search for a vehicle deck concept where I like to use this one. But it just wasn't uh, reliable enough of the time to, to be something that I could use. So, Hearse goes away. Let's go through the rest of the deck just so you can see what we've got. And nothing in the sideboard. Okay, it's called Familiar Exile because the theme is Exile and our star is Stonebinders Familiar. Spirit Dog from Strixhaven. When one or more cards are put into Exile during your turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on Stonebinders Familiar. It only triggers once each turn. It does have limits. Like, I think the only zones that it's effective with are the battlefield and your hand. If you exile, like if you foretell Doomscar, that's going to give you a plus one, plus one. So you're exiling, you're, you know, when you foretell, it goes into the exile zone. But if you exile um, using that hearse card and you, you exile a couple cards from a graveyard, exiling from the graveyard doesn't matter. It doesn't benefit the, the dog. But here's the thing. It says whenever one or more cards are put into exile, it doesn't say from where, you know, so it should work technically. So I think there's limits on this card. It's it's either the only zones that's applicable is if you exile from your hand or from the battlefield. If your opponent uses Tasha City's Laughter and exiles half your deck into the from the graveyard into exile, does not benefit the dog, just so you know. Okay, so the rest of the cards. Portable hole to get rid of cheap mono value two or less creatures or non-land permanents. Circle of confinement that gets us up to mono value three opponents. Dawnbreaker Cleric, where we can gain life, destroy one target enchantment, or exile a card from a graveyard. Enchantment and Sagas work on Stonebiter's Familiar. When you get to stage 3 and exile it, and you got a spirit dog out there, he'll get a plus 1 from exiling the Enchantment Saga. So we've got another one, Machiko's Reign of Truth. We've got Sungold Sentinel, that uh, when she enters the battlefield, you exile up to one target card from a graveyard. Divine Gamut, to exile a target artifact creature or enchantment. This one can be risky because you that player can then put a permanent card from their hand onto the battlefield. If they've got a handful of five or six cards, they could put a big threat out. So you want to um, try if you can, time it, uh, hold on to it for emergencies to survive, or use it with Elite Spellbinder. Put out Elite Spellbinder first. He gets to look at the target opponent's hand. You can take a dangerous card and make him uh, pay two more for it. So say that he's got a bunch of spells and there's one creature that would be a permanent. You could use Elite Spellbinder, put the permanent into exile, and then you could use Divine Gambit on a threat on the field and not have to worry about him bringing something directly down from his hand. So that's the ideal situation. One copy borrowed time. 
One copy of Expel to exile uh, target tapped creature. One Savior of Allenbuck. We're, we're counting on at some point we'll have one dog down that's at least power two or more that we can combine with Savior of Allenbuck. Whenever he trains, you get to exile another target creature from uh, the battlefield or from the graveyard. We've got Sigrid God Favored with Flash and Exile to one target attacking or blocking creature. Uh, classic at this point, Skyclave Apparition for non-land, non-token permanents you don't control with mana value 4 or less. We've got Teleportation Circle, which I'm hoping to use with uh, the four Dawnbringer Clerics. So if I'm dealing with Kamigawa Enchantment decks, I can repeatedly reuse the Cleric to destroy target enchantments or just use them to gain life, that kind of thing. We've got Cemetery Protector, another creature with Flash. When they enter the battlefield, you exile a card from a graveyard. And whenever you play a land or cast a spell, if it shares a card type with that card you exiled, you get to create a human creature token. Two copies of the Wandering Emperor, one of the newer Planeswalkers from Kamigawa. Everybody likes her. Uh, and her third power there, minus two, exile target tapped creature is handy. And the more powerful spells, by your silence, to exile a target non-land permanent. Uh, Doomscar, which we need basically because um, uh, Shia is still a thing, right? <laughs> so let me just bring her up real quick. We need to include green for this. There we go. Uh, because she takes all of the other non-token creatures, turn into lands, and suddenly all of these other cards become worthless. Portable Hole doesn't work. Um, let's see. What else doesn't work? Borrowed Time doesn't work all of a sudden. You know, there's a lot of exile cards that just don't work when a Shia is around. So Doomsguard to take care of a Shia, or Field of Room to take care of a Shia. And Farewell which if you get into real trouble you can exile pretty much anything and everything you want okay so that's the deck we're f we're hoping that we have done enough to uh, overbuild exile into the deck so that it, it works uh, in good synergy the cards with each other in combination and that the concept of exile will overwhelm the opponent's defenses and allow us to get a swings in with a few of our dogs before they get removed that's the idea in two cave of the frost dragons in case we need to uh you know, in case things will go against us, these guys can be our win condition. All right, that's the idea. Remember to like and subscribe. Here we go. Standard deck size. I kind of like my opening hand against a bunch of the one ones. I got. It comes a target of spell you control it okay well let's just get rid of Ooh, well that's a nice first field test any of my dogs yet. This is the key thing. If I want to build up the dogs, I really want to have at least one of them in my opening hand. They're very cheap, but they're so cheap there's competition to see what I can get in my, in my opening hand. I could try and put the more expensive cards in there, so it's ones like that, but... The other drawback is this is kind of a reactionary deck. It's kind of predicated upon the assumption that my Enemy's gonna have stuff like that. No black, so maybe Divine Smite is not gonna be a card that comes into play that much this time around. But I do have a nice little Teleportation Circle Skyclave Apparition combo ready to go. In case he keeps putting out troublesome cards and I want to get rid of the special effects. Ugh. We do this now, why not? Phase out. Neener, neener, neener. Oink, oink, oink. <laughs> I don't know how nice that was. It only bought me one turn. I feel like I should keep Expel for something more serious. 
and just use the apparition on the bugbear. That guy could potentially be a bigger problem. Let's remove that possibility now. him yep but at least he's not gonna get pumped up gross okay so now what do I do I'm running out of ammo Don't be condescending to me with your nice. You know you've got the upper hand now. Sun Gold Sentinel. Better than nothing. And I've got the Wandering Emperor. It's not enough. Yet another Owlbear already. Oh, we're gonna be hurting. Does he have enough? Look at all the land he's got. Finally, I'm home. I have got new moves okay, to so teach you. Okay, so we use you. first strike to take that guy out, and I get a plane. It's not cool, man. Okay, so I file him, I guess. I am almost sad to see you go. And then that's it. He's got the land. The land's almost all that he needs. I think I'm dead no matter what, aren't I? In this case, teleportation circle wasn't going to help me out any. Oh, that's kind of good, actually. I think with his trample, he could have just killed me. Well, we'll see. He might have a surprise. I'm going to lose my Wandering Emperor regardless. They usually have a buff spell at this point. I mean, he's out of lands, right? And if he had had a creature, he would have put it down. Yep, so he keeps the hell out alive. I'm never done for good. What can I? That's value three or less. And I can chump block once with my Frost Dragon. Nope, didn't have enough to spare. Fooey. Our opponent is dazed. 
Let's see if we can keep them dazed with our sparkling deck construction. We're ready for the first couple of plays in case they're a swarm deck. And if not, we just keep storing up our ammo, building towards the teleportation circle. We will take out you tiny stuff now. And if we get to keep our cleric, we can keep getting life flashing in through the teleportation circle each time. Still need a dog to benefit from all the exiling I'm doing. We haven't gotten the dog yet. We got four of them in the deck. Don't really have a good way to search for them in white. What do we do? Let's do... Can, I can't do two there. I can do it there. No, that's an enchantment. This doesn't work on enchantments. So teleportation circle doesn't make much sense right there. So we're going to pass. The problem is this is a creature deck. Huh. All right, this is gonna work though. All right, we've got six, so in comes this guy. In comes this guy, I can afford to destroy the enchantment first. And then we can bring him back. And exile it. So if he has anything to recycle the card, it won't help him. We just have to worry about them having a leer when they have blue. They bring back all their sorceries in instance. It's terrible. Alright, we'll just pass on through. Bring this guy back each time. And we gain two life. That seems fair. Sorry, pass. They will attack with Adeline. It's what they do. It wouldn't occur to them not to attack. But they've got Vigilance. So, Wandering Emperor doesn't help me quite as much, does it? Let's put it out now, anyway. Run away. You'll be safer. We've got the edge in this fight. Show them how we greet our enemies. We don't need to submit anything. They got a lot of land. Are they going to get rid of one of my enchantments? No, they just quit. Interesting choices. Still no sign of the dog, but we did exile a bunch of stuff. And that gave us the type of removal that we needed. So, just focusing on the one keyword, making the deck around it. It's looking pretty good so far. All right. Let's see what we got coming our way. Let's take the dog first. And we'll foretell 
and make the dog more powerful than the Prosperous Innkeeper right away. Emergent Sequence is an excellent card. I've become a fan of it. And Circle of Confinement will work on Snow Covered Forest. Does he have a fight spell already? He does. He killed my dog. They always seem to have Blizzard Brawl, don't they? Now, even if it gets the land back, it's not going to be a token creature, at least. Enchantments, you don't say. Alright. Um, let's do Wandering Emperor, then. I don't know, I'll use the exile on a 1-1 one, one creature. You're just underwhelming. You're done. As long as you don't have a frog hemoth, I'm okay. I just need one turn where I've got the the mana for flash. Got a dragon. You don't Remember have a dragon. Your training. I lost my dog. Tosky. Doesn't have haste, though. Okay. Mm, let's go ahead and put the dog out. Counter on. Hopefully, that's We've enough to stop Toski. This fight. A flyer, eh? Toski has to attack. So that's where Sigrid comes into play. And they're out of ammo. They're also out of creatures. Thank you, Portable Hole. Good timing. Increases the power of the familiar. Show them how we greet our enemies. And we are finally... Oh, we do so well. They don't even want to hang around. Uh, you know, I feel bad sometimes just because I'm trying to show off the deck and showcase the deck. And as soon as the deck starts to click, they scoop. So, when I hang around for the longer matches, you can kind of get the idea that I'm going to lose in the end because I've been hanging on, hanging on, hanging on, and I lose in the end. But, uh, usually with these decks, whatever I'm doing, if I'm going to win, I tend to win fast. Alright, that's the deck. This is the final configuration. It worked kind of nicely every time that we could exile something. Uh, we did really good at controlling the threats when we did get a good uh, sort of rhythm of doing that. Our opponents kind of sense the futility of things, especially if they ran out of ammo and they would quit. So the game matches can go kind of quickly if, if things are going your way. So maybe that's a good thing for you if you're trying to do ranked battles and just climb up real quick and you, you want to maybe not have long drawn out battles once you realize this deck does have the tendency when you start to flood out with land or something that it'll run out of steam in the mid game that maybe you don't want to hang around for that, and maybe you're just willing to scoop, and uh, and then when you, things are going your way, you'll just have really quick wins. Um, but, regardless, I tend to hold on. I tend to, to hold out for hope, especially since I packed uh, the board wipes in there. Once I get the two Doom Scars, I'm like, oh, if only I top deck a Doom Scar, I still have a chance. But I kind of forced to do that just because what I was trying to do was uh, build the exile theme in here for the most part, so I didn't even have the two Doom Scars in at the beginning. I had other exile cards, and there is a limit to how far that can that can go for you, um, especially since you know again only 14 creatures. So if you're going to have 
you know, less than 15 creatures, you probably do always have to have a couple of board wipes. I'm always trying to buck that trend and, and someday I'll learn my lesson and just build them in automatically from the get-go rather than trying to squeeze in other cards. Um, but yeah, that's the deck. That's the theme of Exile. Uh, it's always fun. I, I like the idea of exiling versus destroy when I have a chance. So I tend to look at a lot of these exile cards when I'm building with the white decks, or at least with white as one of the colors. Anyway, that's it for me. This is Travis from Tipo's Corner. Remember to like and subscribe, maybe share the video with a friend. We'll catch you next time because there's always another new deck right around the corner at Tipo's Corner. Have a good one.